Cool. Um, good morning. First talk of the day, uh, research in fintech. So as uh, Luke said, my name is Tom, VP design at Habito. I'm going to take you through kind of a little look about how we use uh, user research, how we've done a little bit of testing, how that influences our product design, and how we continually monitor and track feedback through our product. Um, for those of you who are not aware of Habito, a little bit about us first before we start. Um, we're the UK's largest online mortgage broker. Uh, we've helped over 100,000 customers in the last two years that we've been live. We um, opened our doors in April 2016. Uh, we are the best in class regulated mortgage advice on, on a digital platform. Uh, we manage the customer's application from start to finish. With that, we, we search and we source from over 20,000 products across 90 different lenders, and that allows our mortgage experts to give quotes in minutes rather than the traditional days. A little bit of navel-gazing about where we are as a company. We closed our Series B in September last year, taking our total of raises through the rounds to 25.7 million from Atomico, Ribbit, and... Um, yeah, can't remember the other one. Good, good start. Um, before we did that, though, um, the Habito was started by Dan, our founder, and it came from kind of his own pain point in the mortgage industry. Um, he nearly lost his house because of a broker who kept misspelling names on application forms, and from him coming from a Wonga background in data science, thought that he could do better about that. But obviously not knowing the mortgage industry, not knowing the customers, just purely looking at this from a technology point of view, and as a technology company solving mortgages rather than a mortgage company trying to look into how they can integrate technology, really needed to understand about his customers. So took out a lot of desk research, initial customer profiling, and determined that there were three real main groups that he would be looking for as customers. So you've got home buyers, remortgagers, and customers who are looking for buy-to-let. Each of these customer types have pretty different characteristics as we go through. For home buyers, it's most likely to be the largest purchase that they're ever going to make. Uh, they're going to value openness and transparency. They're going to be new to the process. They're not going to have a lot of background in how to get a mortgage, what mortgages look like, the whole gamut of the process from integrating with conveyancers and solicitors. So they want to be able to trust you, and they want to know that you've got their back, and they want to know that you're going to be the ones to help them through. For somebody looking for a remortgage, we tended to break these down into two main customer types. You'd have customers who were very inert, so that meant that they didn't really have a habit of remortgaging. They were most likely falling onto their lender's standard variable rate, which means that they were paying over and above the odds if they were not looking to remortgage. And they tended to have quite a lot of apathy towards the process. So there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of predators out there in terms of mortgage brokers, and it was looked upon as a very scary place to drop into. We had also active remortgages. This was quite a small subset, but these were customers who tended to look at their mortgage more like a commodity. So how they would change their gas bills or their mobile phone bills to get better deals. They would be looking to get a better deal on their mortgage, which is technically the right thing to do. They would value speed and efficiency and be looking at this from quite a savvy background. They've most likely done a lot of their research themselves as well. And from the other side of this, you've got customers who are looking to buy to let. So, Massively people who are looking at it, rather than a home, they're looking at it as an investment. So they're going to have done quite a lot of research, again, into which lenders they're going to like, which deals they're looking for. And again, very mortgage savvy and focusing on speed and efficiency as they go through the process. So even though you're seeing like, mortgages as a thing and mortgages to get a home or a property, there are certain nuances within that customer group that Dan found. As he went through the company, he, as the company grew, we took on larger and larger scale research groups. So this was one that we commissioned in December 2016 in collaboration with Corporate Punk and Innovation Bubble. Now that's uh, research consultancy groups and actual clinical psychologists as well. Now this was my first foray into meeting quite a lot of my future colleagues at Habito in a room not far from here, uh, darkened behind two-way glass, sitting awkwardly in silence while we watched around 15 people talk passionately and angrily about the mortgage process and why it was broken, which was quite a baptism of fire to drop into for a new company, especially coming from a more agency background and a not fintech background. What we found from that was that fear was, rather than frustration, is the overriding dominant emotion, which is driving behavior in the mortgage market. Customers are scared. They're scared they're either going to lose their house because their situation has changed when they're remortgaging, or they're scared of the process that they may feel like predatory from a mortgage broker um, or from an estate agent point of view. Now, we tended to find customers were looking for either an ally or a protector. And these were the key psychological uh, profiles that we found from our customers. Now, if you're looking for an ally, that means that you're looking for somebody to help you out, share the information with you, help you navigate through the complex waters of getting a mortgage. Or if you're looking for a protector, you're looking for someone who can deflect all of the bad information from you, shield you from all of the predators out there, and just literally get you the thing that you want. Um, we've 
aligned our brand more to be an ally because that was the dominant of the two, that was the more dominant one that came through in the research. So we pitch Habito as somewhere that we're going to help you. We're not going to hide anything. We're, we're not opaque. We're going to be transparent about our fees. We're going to be transparent about our process. We're going to be transparent about how we're going to help you and if there are any pain points. We're not going to shy away from this and try and deflect all the bad things from you. Um, we also found that everybody was looking for freedom and that the inertia of the industry was driven by a risk of change. Now, that freedom can come from the freedom of home ownership, the freedom from the process, the freedom from the pain points of your last mortgage, and also the risk of change is, again, driven and linked with the fear, is that if I'm exposing myself and I'm going through the mortgage, mortgage process and customers are being scrutinized on whether they have Netflix or how many Nandos they've had in the last three weeks, it's that risk of change which is going to be really painful for customers. We evolved that into our second research group, and this was conducted uh, at the start of this year, end of last year. As you can see, like, we started off with desk research. It was kind of friends and family that Dan was talking to and trying to get a little bit more information in person. As we grew larger as a company, we could basically put some money into actual research, talking with customers in a very um, lab-based way. The third one that we run was actually in person in our offices where we invited customers to come through over a number of days and talk to us in person about their experience with Habito and their experience in mortgages in general. Now, the, these in-person um, research groups were obviously, because we're in London and because we're asking people at 6.30 on a Tuesday to come into our offices, had a little bit of a bias towards customers that were very local to us. But we do tend to find that by talking to customers on live chat, a lot of their pain points and a lot of their characteristics are very similar across the country. So what we found from this is that, or what we wanted to do from this is to gain a deeper insight into the customer journey with Habito. And that's not just from a product point of view, but this is from the start of your mortgage point of view. And I think it's important that when we, we're designing products for fintech is we're not just thinking about the time that the customer picks up their phone or they go on their laptop to log on to your product or service. You're thinking about what drivers that have led them to your service. You're thinking about where they are in the process of whether they're getting a bank account, a mortgage, an insurance product and how you can understand and influence their journey, both sides of where your product and your design starts and finishes. This also gave us a really good opportunity to look at customer growth for the future. So being able to talk and having uh, heads from marketing, from sales, from strategy, from operations, come and talk to our customers direct face to face was super good to understand exactly what they were looking for in the mortgage process and how we could help them in the future. And this fostered a really big, um, and this helps to foster a really big internal culture of listening to our customers. Now, we're a massively customer-centric business, and I don't think any business now starting up is ever going to be anything other than customer-focused. I think the, the landscapes massively shift from we're going to do this for you to we're going to do this with you and we're going to help you out. Now, the research group was conducted over two nights with two groups of customers. One were non-customers of ours. Uh, these were people that have fallen out of the funnel. They've maybe gone with another mortgage broker. They've maybe got a better deal in person. And we wanted to understand exactly what it was that, helped, that, that made them drop off and drop out of the process with Habito. And we also had our own customers as well. These were current customers who'd gone through and completed the process where we got valuable feedback from them main characteristics that we found out is that they're youthful. And this wasn't necessarily an age. This could also be an outlook. We had customers over 50, 55 in these research groups. But they all had a very youthful outlook and were very forward thinking. But they were also very demanding on that. So they want things now, and they want things done for them, and they want things done properly. They're knowledgeable, they're opinion leaders, and they're also very digital savvy. And I think like a lot of these fintech products and a lot of the people that you're probably here talking today will talk about obviously being digital first. And I think there's a definite challenge to bring some other generations that are not digital savvy into our world. But this was what we found from our characteristics. And that meant that they were service oriented. So they're used to Netflix, they're used to Deliveroo, they're used to Uber, on-demand services that you can get anytime, anywhere. And these are services that are built around customers rather than having opening times of nine till five. These are, these are services that they're looking for which are going to flex to them and they're going to be available to them when they want them to be. So catalysts are really important as well. So one thing that we drove into in the research group was what's actually driving people to pick up the phone, pick up the laptop, and log on to our product or service. And I think this goes across the board for any product or any company that you're working for is to understand exactly what it is, that driver that's going to put somebody over the edge to engage with you. So, most of these had a very identifiable event or a catalyst, and all of these customers had certain triggers along the way which helped them to jump into the mortgage process, jump into the Habito process, and all of them had a significant effect on people considering a mortgage. On the plus side, this actually also gave us a really good opportunity to look at targeting and re-messaging. So 
uh, if people are looking for relevant messages, is Facebook the right channel? If people are looking and they've had a relationship change or they've got married or divorced, where can you advertise and where can you pick these customers up where their catalysts are? Well, some of the things that we found obviously were, for us particularly, and for a lot of fintech, is economic factors. Um, we saw huge growth and huge spikes in volume when interest rate rises were announced. There's transition milestones in customers' lives and even unexpected windfalls such as inheritance or mad crypto gains. Uh, relevant messages were driving customers to us and feeling that it's just time and new opportunities, social pressures and relationship milestones were also super important catalysts for customers wanting to engage with the mortgage process. So how does this tie up together and help us to build a customer-centric product? For the majority of us and for us especially, the customer's first interaction with Habito is on the website. And what we're trying to do with the website is obviously welcome people and show them exactly who we are. But based on the research, we can structure this page in a way which, which ticks off a lot of the customer's needs and wants. So mortgage industry is full of jargon. It's full of noise. It's full of predatory people. It's full of everybody has an opinion. So we wanted to create quite a clear and uncluttered space to give people kind of the feeling of calm and that they're in the right place and we're going to be able to help them. We use simple call to actions. It's very obvious what the thing is that you need to do. And I think that's really important when you're looking at products from a fintech point of view. It's like there is one best action for your customer to take, or there is a number of great actions that this customer can take. We have a big emphasis on trust. We obviously are really, pretty proud of our trust pilot reviews. And the fact that we integrate live chat throughout the site has gone a long way to increasing customers' trust with us. We're not just an anonymous, faceless organization. There are people from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m., seven days a week, available to chat and available to answer your questions. The way we structure the website as well is around business, social, and industry proofs. So these business proofs could be about who we are, who we work with, which lenders, what our algorithms are, and why technology is important. Social proofs, such as customer testimonials, trust pilot reviews, giving customers the feeling that there are people like me that have used this service and have been successful, therefore I want to be like them and industry proof, such as articles that have been written about us, videos that have been shot, and general chatter around the industry, just to give us kind of credibility and credence. Because we're, we're only a two-year-old company, and it's that heritage that a lot of lenders and a lot of mortgage brokers have, uh, which we can't combat with. We're not a first-year-old company. So we need to be highlighting any time that we're talked about in any good articles. One of the customer's first ports of call with us is our mortgage calculator. Now, from the research groups, we found out that the main questions that customers come into the process with is how much can I borrow, what house prices can I afford, and how much is this going to cost me per month? And those questions kept coming up time and time again across the three research groups. And what this calculator does is look to solve them. So we pull in live data from over 20,000 mortgage products across 90 lenders, which is quite different to a lot of the standard mortgage calculators, which will give you essentially a four and a half times or five times your income multiplier. So we're actually tailoring the small subset of information that you'll give us about your income and your employment to have a product match, which is going to be around about 85% right for you from this small subset of information. It allows customers to edit their borrowing, savings, so they can get a nice customizable view. It gives them quite a lot of value up front. When the customers carry on their journey with us, they'll hit the customer dashboard. And this allows them to see exactly where they are in the mortgage process. Again, driven by research, people were confused. And especially when we were essentially asking customers to fill in a massive, great form, this can take place over a couple of days. So it's important that when customers are logging out and logging in again, they know exactly where they are and exactly where they're going to be, left, where they're going to be going next. And again, it's a focus on one call to action. What is your next best action, and how can you do this? On a side note, we allow customers to upload documents securely, again, highlighting trust, and at any time they can talk to a mortgage expert in the bottom right-hand corner. They talk to our mortgage experts via live chat, and we find that 96% of our customers prefer the use of live chat over the phone. And this is, we offer all of our customers the option to have phone call or, vo or, phone call or live chat. And this flexibility to fit around their life has been really big for us. Like, if you can drop a message to us at 10 p.m., we'll pick it up in the morning. Documents can be uploaded on your lunch break. You can have a chat with your partner in the evening and drop us another message. It's about being always on. And it's also our first line of customer feedback. So all of these chats, um, when, when you're having a chat with a mortgage expert, they're going to be asking you for product feedback. How did you find that journey? Was this OK for you? Was anything confusing? And it's a really great way of getting first line customer support. So how do we track that feedback? As well as live chat, in which we have a site-wide intercom integration, we have Trustpilot and NPS scores. And one of the interesting things with live chat on that is that, as I mentioned, we're available seven days a week, 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. And everybody in the company is mandated to do what we call an intercom shift at least once a month, which gives them direct communication and direct connection with our customers. 
And we get training for that. We have tone of voice and we have brand training. And obviously, we expect everybody that we work with to have a decent level of mortgage information. But they tend to be questions about, I don't understand this question, or how do I find out this information on your website? And it just allows us to kind of really build a nice connection across all levels of the business with our customers. Trustpilot's super important, and we respond to every customer concerns and criticisms, and we also do monthly customer workshops, uh, um, which have representatives from all of our functional roles talk about the latest Trustpilot reviews, see what we could do better, and highlight any opportunities to change our product in that. NPS, uh, for those of you who don't know, Net Promoter Score, is essentially an email sent out at different stages in the journey, which will ask you one question, is would you like to, would, how much on a scale of one to 10 are you likely to recommend this product or service? We get really good verbatim feedback on that as well. And we offer it at a couple of different points. So there are different points in the journey in which you can um, request this. Post quote and post offer are the most popular ones at the moment. And this is a super important internal barometer. And we share this weekly in our all hands. And it really gives us a sense of how well we're doing from a customer service and a customer centric point of view. We share all of this feedback in Slack. So the majority of you are probably using Slack or some kind of communications tool. If you integrate these tools and services, such as Trustpilot and NPS, it creates a super nice open culture and transparent nature to your business. It allows people to both highlight and celebrate the wins, but also be really accountable for the actions and be able to go in and try and solve any customer complaints on the dot right there. We also have a stories channel as well, where we collect the best customer experiences. And certain stories always stick, stick in my mind. We had a guy about a month or so ago who was remortgaging to build an extension because he'd had his second set of twins. Now, like. At this point in his life, we do not be, want to be the ones that are getting in the way, right? So it's both a pleasure to be a part of that and great to be able to build a service that can fit around his life and chaos and chaos and like what exactly he wants to achieve in his goals. We do quite a lot of on-demand testing as well. Um, services such as what users do or usertesting.com are super good. They're fairly cheap in comparison with running in-person user groups, so they're good to be able to get a large swathe of the audience to a large swathe of your customer audience to potentially engage with your product or service. Now, for us especially, and potentially for a couple of others in fintech, it's really difficult to tell customers to imagine you're getting a mortgage. Like, this is a super heightened emotional state you're going to be on. It's a roller coaster getting your first mortgage. But what we wanted to test was first impressions. And we wanted to test whether you understood the proposition, whether this was something that you felt like you would align to from a brand point of view. Did you understand our onboarding journey? Were there questions that were confusing? Even if you're not in the mortgage process, if, you, if we asked you to, here's a load of products, do you understand exactly what they mean? It's good feedback for us. And we got quite a few potential barriers from that. And one of the last sessions, we had 10 decent sizable points, which were for improvement. I think it's always good when you're stuck in the weeds in designing a product and you're thinking about the thing that you're making and the next thing you're making is to take a step back and actually ask customers whether they understand what you're doing. And no matter where you are, this was only maybe like six months ago we did this, there were points which most people missed. And we're like, oh yeah, that actually isn't phrased the right way. We're, trying to, we're using jargon where we shouldn't be. We also do quite a lot of automated and data-driven testing and feedback as well, where we do A-B testing, where you're testing two variants, and multivariant testing, where you're testing a couple of them. We have really good integrations with both Looker and um, Optimizely, which gives us a really good granular cohort analysis. So these are third-party tools. Uh, Looker's fairly expensive. But to be able to drill down into exactly what the customer profile is targeted from Facebook ads, how they react differently through the funnel to people from a Google ad, how do we attribute TV metrics and stuff like that, it's very, very interesting to do that from a data point of view and refine your journey based on kind of raw data and proof. Testing examples that we have are on call to action copy, whether you go through an illustration journey or a calculator journey, different sign up designs, trying to show like ease, speed, what are our proof points, changing some of those, and also button placement within forms. Like, as I mentioned, we're essentially asking customers to fill out a massive form, and percent optimization as they go through that funnel is super important for us. We run experiments over around about two weeks, and that gives us decent statistical significance on that, because you get kind of our busiest days at the moment are weekends, um, so it's good to be able to get a couple of those in to prove that we are doing exactly the right thing when we set these experiments live. So finally, to wrap it all up, we have a really good culture, and I think this is something which has probably come through in a lot of um, talks, is build, learn, and iterate. Like We want to be building stuff. We want to be learning about our customers. We want to be taking on their feedback, and we want to be making small changes and big changes to reflect that. This takes tight alignment, though, with teams such as engineering, product design, marketing, our mortgage experts, to make sure that we're all kind of heading to the same goal. It's no good five teams with different direction. You need to have super tight alignment when you're working in this kind of framework. 
We share all of our UX and design prototypes across the board and across the business. That could be either in a presentation at all hands or shared in Slack. And we offer everybody the chance to give feedback on these, because we've got experts from all different domains across our business. The way we run engineering is in fortnightly engineering sprints, but we also have continuous integration and deployment. And we're kind of getting into that point now where we're not afraid to make mistakes, especially when you wrap this up with optimized experiments and you can only do, say, 5% of your audience. It gives you a good basis to actually be a bit more confident and just go out there and build stuff for people. So that's me. Thank you very much. Um, two more things to call out if anybody is after a mortgage or if your friends are a mortgage. Um, Unlimited £100 referrals for all of your friends if they go on to complete their mortgage. And if you're looking for a great career, come and join us and check out the website. Thank you very much. Have a good day.